Uhuru, and welcome back to the official broadcast of the Free Speech Trial of the Century. My name is Mwazi Odom, and I present to you today the case, the U.S. government versus the Uhuru Three. Again, comrades, I want to welcome everybody. It has been such an honor to serve as the chair of the Hands Off for Who Hands Off Africa counteroffensive, which for more than two years has waged a relentless counteroffensive against the U.S. government's attempt to silence the voice of Chairman Amali Echatela and the Uhuru movement. Every single day during this trial on the ground, we will broadcast with the video of the violent raids that you just saw, these pre-dawn raids that were carried out by the U.S. government through the FBI on July 29, 2022, that took place in seven homes and offices of the African People's Socialist Party in both St. Louis, Missouri and St. Petersburg, Florida. It took the FBI and the DOJ nine months after these violent attacks that Chairman Amalia Shatella, Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, and two leaders of the party solidarity component, Jesse um, uh, Penny Hess and Jesse Neville, Penny, the chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee, and Jesse Neville, the chair of the um, of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, were indicted on bogus, bogus charges of being labeled quote unquote Russian agents. We are clear that these charges are an absolute attack on the right to free speech of Africa. African people and the right for us to come to our own positions and our own determinations regarding matters of national and international policies um, um, of the U.S. government. I am here, comrades, just a few feet away from the federal courthouse here in Tampa and where the Uhuru 3 trial began just two days ago on Tuesday, September 3rd. We have been putting out the call all around the world for people to come to Tampa and we want to salute everybody who have come from throughout the U.S also here on the ground, packing the courthouse, packing the overflow room in support of our comrades, Chairman Amalia Chatella, Penny Hess, and Jesse Neville. Again, as you know, cameras are not allowed in the courtroom. However, we want to be able to ensure every single day. And so this is why we are bringing you this broadcast so that you can also have the real information that they are not going to provide in court about who Chairman Amalia Chatella is, the history of the work of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhura movement. So we have initiated this daily broadcast again that includes live trial updates, um, English, French, and Spanish translations that you will see throughout you know, this process periodically, historical footage and classic presentations from Chairman Amalia Chatella and other Uhura movement leaders. We will also um, interview um, um, Uhura movement leaders and supporters highlight the work of the Uhura movement internationally, including our important work happening right there on the ground in Africa and in Europe. And we will acquaint you, acquaint you with the dual power economic development programs of our movement. And these are the things that have come under attack by the U.S. government. We also intend to give you all the information that you need to understand, again, who Chairman Amalia Shatella is, who the Uhura Three are, to show you the history the work, the trajectory of the Uhura movement so that you, the people, the real jury can have the confidence to know that who the state is attacking, who is truly guilty of attacking the people's constitutional rights, the right to free speech, the right to freedom of association, the right to freedom of assembly, and that the Uhura three are absolutely not guilty of these charges being leveled against them. So I, I wanna give you a quick recap of day two of the trial. So um, day two, which was September 4th, 2024, just on yesterday here on the ground in Tampa, Florida. This was the second day of the federal criminal trial of the Uhura Three on bogus charges again of being quote unquote secret pawns of the Russian government. This conspiracy to quote unquote sow discord and to quote interfere with US elections. This is, um, this is where we saw the government begin to argue their case. They presented three witnesses. The first was Syracuse professor, Brian D. Taylor. He talked about the history of, uh, of Russian intelligence services. He admitted that he knew nothing about the African People's Socialist Party. Bernie Spear Media will provide more detail on Taylor and his role in future reports. The government's second witness was FBI special agent who specializes in quote unquote, or in quote, digital forensics. His job was to organize the data from all the electronics that the FBI seized during these raids um, on seven movement properties and homes. He testified that the FBI had taken more than 20 terabytes of data. Mind you, this is so much data that it would take someone a lifetime to review. The government's third witness was another FBI special agent. This one had participated in the raids on the home of Chairman Amalia Chatella. And well, sorry, this one participated in the home of um, Bahura Movement member um, Penny Hess. So this agent helped confiscate Penny's um, computer, 
her phone and all of her electronic devices. She took hundreds of emails, Facebook and Skype communications. She testified about the content of the seized data that she had reviewed. The Uhuru 3 filed a Freedom of Information Act, also known as a FOIA or a FOIA request under, um, you know, to uncover the extent and, and the time and the frame and, well, sorry, ra rather the time frame of the FBI surveillance on them. Their requests, again, were denied. And we will continue to give you more updates on that because, you know, the Freedom of Information Act is a for us as the people to understand just how deep this, this history of surveillance goes. And um, we have done countless, um, you know, reports and um, information that we have put out on the Hands Off website about our attempt to retrieve this FOIA Act and the FBI's, you know, relentless, you know, struggle to, you know, or relentless attacks to not, you know, provide that information. So again, this kind of U.S. government, you know, secret police surveillance has been carried out again on the Black Liberation Movement for decades. The FBI's first director, J. Edgar Hoover, launched his career by framing Marcus Garvey. Some of the Uhuru 3 communications that were introduced into evidence on day two dealt with, with, with an Uhuru petition that charged the United States with genocide against African people. This genocide was brought to the, to, to the United Nations. The government is now trying to make the case, or continues to make the case, that the Impedum's Africans Charged Genocide Petition was created under the control of the Russian government. Again, African people have agency. We are clear on who the enemy is and that this, this um, history, this 600 year old history of genocide against African people is nothing new. And they, this is exactly what they also said about William Patterson, W.E.B. Du Bois, Paul Robeson in 1951. In the 1940s and the 1950s, Paul Robeson was labeled as a Russian agent after visiting the Soviet Union. He was forced to testify at the House of Un-American Committee and his passport was, was taken from him. Sound familiar? And in 1951, W.E.B. Du Bois was indicted, arrested, and arraigned by the U.S. government with the charge of being a Russian agent after he put out a petition against nuclear weapons, and he was 83. Again, sound familiar. The FBI's history on the war on the Black liberation struggle is long and old, and it is coming to an end in this trial. So we want to encourage you to come to, to, come to Tampa, pack the courthouse, go to handsoffforhuwa.org slash trial, Fill out that form. Let us know what dates we can count on you. This trial is expected to be three weeks long. Um, and so we want to make sure that week two, which is just coming up, that we have reinforcements coming in on the way here to Tampa. So go to our website, handsoffforhuwa.org. And without further ado, comrades, we're going to go ahead and move our program on today. So as you know, we, um, you know, we look forward to a free and liberated Africa, a free and liberated world. And we have a wonderful, wonderful piece of African culture. Uh, this is called the African Nation Fight Song. And it is my honor and my pleasure to bring to you the African Nation Fight Song, written and composed by our, compress, our, our, com, our comrade and maestra, Alikia Ngoma. So I bring to you now the African Nation Fight Song and Uhuru. <laughs>
And welcome back, everyone, to the official broadcast of the Uhura 3 trial. We are here on the ground in Tampa, Florida. My name is Mboise Odom, and you just heard the wonderful and exciting African Nation fight song. I want to salute Carmida Lika in Goma for producing that brilliant piece. Next up on today's program, as you know, this is the place where you will be able to get a, um, a on-the-ground updates about what is happening for the Uhura 3 trial and to learn the history of the African People's Socialist Party, see classic interviews and also, um, you know, presentations. So coming up next is one of the hands-off Uhuru, you know, one of the interviews that happened as the process of this hands-off Uhuru campaign fighting to get this news and this, and, and this in, um, information about the Uhura 3 out into the world. So you're going to hear um, and, and get a chance to watch a, um, an interview of the chairman of Malia Shatella, which was conducted by former Fox News journalist and commentator Tucker Carlson. This interview aired on March 22nd, 2024, and has been viewed by over and more than a quarter of a million people. And in this video, Chairman Amalia Shatella talks about his history of political organizing and explains the significance and the work of the Uhura movement. Chairman Amalia Shatella brilliantly sums up the importance of defending the Uhura Three as a means to not only protect the freedom of speech, but the people's right to hear speech that the U.S. government and the corporate media don't like and that they don't want us to hear. So let's go ahead and roll that clip. <laughs> 